to Introduction to Education Research. My name is Anne Rojas, and with me behind the scenes is Kim Burton. And we're just here to show you tonight about our online library, how it works, and how to use the resources and find the resources that we have. So the internet is a beautiful thing, uh, but finding what you need can be really problematic when there's too much information. Too much information actually makes it harder to figure out what's going, going to work for you. And we're here to help you find the right information for your coursework. Spending a little bit of time up front, familiarizing yourself with the library resources and how to use them is going to save you a lot of time down the road. So tonight we're going to cover the basics of navigating the online library. Uh, where to find the best resources for your coursework, and how to put together an effective search. We'll also talk about accessing full text and, of course, how to get help. So some of the information on the open web is useful. Uh, there's a, a lot of good information through professional organizations and on government websites. Those are really reliable. There's also Google Scholar, which is a great tool. We all love Google. But your main source for coursework is going to be current journal articles. Uh, books take a long time to publish. We use those mostly for background information. And we do have books in the library. I'll show you where to go for those. But the main focus in this session tonight is going to be on how to find journal articles. And you can use those for your assignments and to back up your discussion posts. We'll talk about where to find them and how to search efficiently for them. Uh, when you're looking for the current conversation on education issues for your discussion posts and assignments, your primary source is going to be those journal articles. Now, we always encourage people to bookmark the library homepage. You can get there through the um, portal or the classroom, Blackboard Classroom, but you don't have to. You can just type in the URL library.waldenu.edu. And we'll just go there live now instead of working from the PowerPoints. Sorry, it always opens up in a different screen here. OK, so what can you access from the library homepage? Well, the most popular page actually is the course guides page. So if you uh, look for this big blue button here where it says course guides and click on that, uh, that's going to take you to the readings that you have that are marked as available in the library. So any required readings that are marked available in the Walden University Library, you'll be able to find in your course guide. And what we do is link them out by the course code. That's an alphanumeric. So if we go to E for the education pages and just look at one as an example, um, if we go to this Foundations of Early Childhood Studies, you can see here that your required course readings are listed uh, and hot linked out. And when you look at those, uh, just so that you know, they come from different library databases. So they'll have a different look to them. Oops, sorry, forgot to sign in. So you can see this one is available in the, one of the ProQuest databases. You can download the PDF here. And then uh, other ones will look just a little bit different uh, depending upon where they're coming from in our collections. And we'll go there to see. The well, layout is a little bit different, but you can have HTML or PDF full text available there. And what we also have available on some of the course guides is help with your discussions and assignments, and some of them also have writing center resources. And so you can go to any of these um, pages to get help with anything that we have found has been library intensive. And so we've put out some help for you as far as uh, how to go in and search what we have available in the library, some recommendations for where to search. So that's, uh, as I said, our most popular uh, page for people just starting with Walden for how to find your required course readings that are available in the library. Now, we also have uh, links available to an alphabetical list of our databases. You can go to look for journals by name, and you can search for books here as well. 
If you have a specific article you're looking for, we have article search available and dissertations, and then you can always go to more resources. From any of our library pages, you'll also have these tabs available across the top. Uh, ask a librarian in the upper right hand corner always, but you can go here to start your research. Uh, we'll look there in a bit, as well as getting help and other services, and you can find out about your friendly librarians here on the home page as well. So hopefully that'll just give you the, the quick lowdown on what the layout is. Now we do have this Google style search box on the library. Uh, this is searching our search tool Thoreau, which is looking at over half of the collection here at the library. And um, a lot of people get frustrated with this because it's uh, it looks like it's a Google style search box, but it really doesn't work the same way as Google. So if I put in my entire search query in this search box and click on search, it's going to tell me that there are no results. And that's just because the library databases don't like whole sentences or questions. The library databases like just keywords. So if instead of searching what is leadership doing about discipline in high schools, I look at uh, high school discipline and leadership, I can pull that up and you can see that I get now 74 results. So that's going to give us um, a start for how to find uh, resources from that main search box on the home page. Now there's also a little radio button here for searching everything. And this searches not just the databases for books and articles, but it also searches the library website and our quick answers, uh, which is answers to frequently asked questions. So if you have a question about something like peer review, if your professor is talking a lot about peer review and you're not sure what's happening with that, you can search for peer review, uh, searching everything. And on uh, this left-hand column, it's going to give information that we have available on our website about um, verifying peer review, uh, evaluating resources, and different places that we talk about peer review on the library website. In the middle column, it's going to give you um, results from quick answers, which is answers to frequently asked questions. So here you can find answers to questions like, what is peer review? How do I find an article? How do I know that my article is peer reviewed? And so you can click on any of those to get an answer to your question. And then over on the right hand side is your results list from Thoreau, which is that um, search tool that we have linked from the main page. And this will give you links to articles and books that are available and related to peer review. So again, that's just uh, from the library homepage. You can search the row. That'll go to default. It's searching really broadly. So you're going to get a lot of results. Um, some may be related to more to education than others. And then you also have the option to search everything, to search our website as well. As the education librarians, Kim and I would normally recommend that you go to the subject resources section where it says select a subject and click on the education link to take you to resources that are specifically selected for education students. And so you can bookmark this page as well. Everything that you need to get to, you can get to from here. And we have a, a Google style search box here as well. And we'll go and do a search there in just a minute. But just to let you know the layout of this, you can go to education databases, find education journals and books in the middle section. And underneath, you can get research help uh, for different aspects of your research. What I would recommend is even if you forget everything that we talk about tonight, you can always go to this Education Research Basics. It'll give you a quick video and some links to different resources to help you get started with basic searching. We also have links to quick answers here and Ask a Librarian and doctoral students can make appointments with us as well. 
So um, again, this one, uh, this search box works the same way that that other one does. Um, if you put in a full sentence, you're probably not going to get many results, if any. On our page, we do have um, a test run on a little video that tells you how it works. So again, you can you can get a quick answer to uh, how that works. So instead of searching common core policy in elementary schools, you would want to just break it down and say um, common core and policy and elementary. And you can just search it that way to start to get some results. Instead of zero, it gives you over 750 results. And so again, it's casting a pretty wide net, but this search box, instead of searching over half the collection, is actually just searching a curated list of databases that Kim and I have selected that are education and education related. So for finding an article or a resource available on something to just back up your discussion post on a weekly discussion, or uh, if you need to find a f one or, or three articles on a topic, that can be a really uh, easy way to search. Just remember to put in your, your main concepts and not, um, not a whole sentence. So if we go to education databases to do what I like to call a more precision search, you can see that you get a list of specific databases. And this defaults to the graduate list, but you can also go to an undergraduate list for uh, recommendations. And this will give you links to uh, what we would recommend to get started as an undergraduate education student. Um, what, what we'll do now is go into Education Source. Education Source is a really broad collection, and so uh, we find that it's just a, a really easy place to get started. So if we look at this, um, now we've got three search boxes instead of just the one. And this is what I mean by doing a little bit more precision searching. So if we're doing that original search that we did with high school and leadership and discipline, we can put all of those in. And underneath, you can see that full text is already checked. So that's handy. Everything that we find will be available in full text. If you're Instructor is asking you to look for peer-reviewed resources. You can check that as well. And then you can also limit the dates. Sometimes for those weekly discussion posts, they'll want you to look at things that are just from the last few years. And so if we search that, you can see that we get 24 results, which seems sort of odd uh, because we know there's quite a bit more on that. but. Um, what we can do is, because we have three search boxes instead of just the one, is that we can start to put in some synonyms for our, our different concepts. And what I like to do is think of it as putting in just one concept per line and separating out synonyms with the word or within your boxes. So you can do um, high school or secondary and search that. And you can look at leadership or principals, or you can look at administrators too. And um, I'll just mention here that you can actually save yourself some typing by using an asterisk for words that uh, vary in the end. So leader uh, with an asterisk will pick up leader as well as leadership. Administrate with an asterisk will pick up administrators, administration, and administrate. So you want to put in the asterisk at the end of the root word so that you get the different variations. If we run that search then, instead of getting 24 results, that's going to open it up and give us over 300. So you can see that it makes a really big difference. Okay, I think that I'll just pop back quickly to the PowerPoint. Are there any questions so far? Uh, no, not so far. We've been able to um, answer the ones that have come through. Okay, so I'll just pop back into the PowerPoint then. Um, you can see that the library homepage and the education research page, the links are available here in the PowerPoint. So if you download it, you'll have those. 
uh, just remember that uh, the advantages to using the library is that you do end up with credible sources without a doubt as opposed to googling things you do have peer review limiters uh, full text is available um, there are some tools to that provide APA help as well which I'll mention in just a minute and just in general uh, how I like to put it is that less is more because going through 100 or even 300 results in a library database is much easier than trying to figure out what's going to work from a Google or a Google Scholar search. And really the only thing you have to remember is that keywords are the important thing. You want to look for the main concepts, making sure you're pulling out what's most important, and think about synonyms because a lot of us get stuck in our own turn of phrase and it might turn out that additional vocabulary is being used out there that you weren't thinking of and you can uh, add those things in as you find them along the way. You can do that by looking at the subject lines and in the abstracts as well. So choosing the right keywords is really important, but the other important thing, as we could see, is how you put them together. So not using the whole sentences, but using connector words, uh, and the, we use and, or, and not when we're using the library databases to connect our keywords. And the way those work is that, um, for instance, if I'm looking for people who watch both Big Bang Theory and NCIS, uh, although it's counterintuitive, if you use and, you're going to get a smaller set because you're only going to get that little slice of overlap. Whereas uh, if I use or, I want to look at people who watch Big Bang Theory or NCIS, I'm going to get everybody in both circles. So with or, I'm going to get more results. It's kind of an easy way to remember it. You can also use not, although not is a little bit tricky because you're almost inevitably going to be taking out things that you might be able to use when you put in not. So that if I search for people who watch NCIS but not Big Bang Theory, I'm going to miss that little piece uh, of my circle here, the overlap between the two. So I'm going to have my NCIS circle with a little bite taken out of it because I've said not people who watch Big Bang Theory. So hopefully that um, illustration makes it a little bit easier to understand how it works. If we go back to our searches then, just to reiterate how it works. Um, usually if you're searching for two or three concepts at a time, that works best. Um, if you're looking for really general terms, that can make it challenging. So if I'm looking at math for preschool, children or we can put in uh, early childhood education uh, and if I search that you can see that I'm going to get like 3600 results which is an awful lot I probably don't want to look at at that many but as I mentioned before you can look through the subject lines and you can see here that preschool education is a subject, mathematics is a subject. Um, I know from doing this in the past that early childhood education is also a subject. And so we can use tools in the database to look for these as subjects instead of uh, searching just for anywhere in the articles. And if we if we do that, uh, the difference being that if if we look for it as a subject term and we know that it's used as a subject term from looking through those initial results, we're going to be finding articles that are actually about those things as opposed to um, articles that might just mention them uh, as they relate to other concepts. And so that just off the top uh, reduces it from over 3,000 to 1,200. So we still have too many, but we're starting to get a better grip on um, uh, a more focused results list. Now usually what I would recommend uh, is searching a third concept for this because again you're doing um, such such a broad search so what you could do for instance is add in readiness and search that. Uh, you could also try searching for um, math instruction or um, teaching methodology, you could, you know, search any of a number of different 
uh, things, different aspects of math in preschool to search for it. And you can see from that drop down that you can search also in the abstract. So if it's mentioned in the summary, that's going to give it more focus. If you find a favorite author, you can search for authors. And you can search also for um, the titles. So if you're looking for a specific article, you can search for the titles as well. So let's just take a look, a little bit closer look at the results list then. You can see here that we have the full text available and this is telling us that it's from an academic journal. Sometimes you're going to get a Find at Walden button and when you get that Find at Walden and click on it, it's either going to take you into a different database or it's going to give you suggested databases for where to go for the full text. So this is just the databases talking to each other to um, make it easy for you to find what you're looking for. And you can see that in this one, again, it's a slightly different layout, but um, you have the PDF link right here at the top. Uh, other things that you can do when you're searching um, or looking through your results list from your search is click on the title of any of the results and you can from that, get all of the author information, the specifics on the source, all of the subject headings, and it will also give you the abstract. And the abstracts can be really useful. They can be great time savers because by reading the abstract, which is just a quick summary, uh, you can find out if you really want to go ahead and dive in and read the whole article. Sometimes you'll look through the abstract and think uh, that it really doesn't have as much to do with your topic as you thought it did, and so you can move on to the next thing. Uh, sometimes you'll look at it and realize that it's right on target, so you want to for sure read it. And for reading them, you can use the tools over here on the right. Uh, you can put them into your Google Drive, print them, email them to yourself, save them to your hard drive, all different tools available here. And that APA help that I mentioned before, uh, that's found here with the site function. You can get help for what the formatting is for your reference page. And it's not perfect, but it is a really good start. Um, here you can see that it's giving you um, the full APA citation, but it does have the capitalization incorrect for the title of the article, so you would have to fix that. It's still a lot easier to copy and paste that, though, than to start from scratch for your APA formatting for your references. Uh, at least that's how I look at it. I don't know. You'll, you'll see what works for you as you move forward. So that's... Um, kind of what you're finding as you go in there in a nutshell. Uh, searching in the subject lines and in the abstracts is uh, what we call in the library business using the indexing. And that's just an easy way to take advantage of the fact that the information here is really well organized. And so getting, like I said, 75 results for preschool readiness for math is going to be a lot easier than wading through millions of hits on Google. So do you have any uh, questions come up so far? Anything I should go over again? Uh, no, not so far. Was, um, someone has a question. Um, we were able to get their answers, but um, nothing else. OK, well, we'll go back to this uh, slide deck then. Um, just remember that all databases work this way, so you can go in and and get some experience under your belt using like education source, which is a great place to start. And that's going to help you um, search any of the library databases in the future, uh, whether you're continuing in um, uh, just to do your undergraduate, you probably won't need much more than education source and ERIC, or if you're going into graduate work uh, to go beyond those main um, undergraduate databases. Just be ready to skim titles, subject lines, and abstracts. And remember that synonyms are your friends. And there are lots of tools that you can use that will be saving you lots of time down the road. We have um, more tools. If you go to the Get Help uh, page from the library, and also we have a Google Scholar search box and a tool for verifying peer review. So we'll just go over that really quickly. Um, Get help is from this uh, start your research, uh, next to start your research 
tab and you can see that the webinars are available here, both upcoming and recorded. Uh, we also have tutorials. The webinars tend to be between 30 and 60 minutes. The tutorials are under 10, uh, so they're much more focused on a single skill. And then we also have library skills guides, which will give you a list of links to static pages that will give you help for finding full text, um, finding books, uh, how to use Google Scholar, and many other topics as well. We do have that quick answers search box here too, and I should mention that it's answers to frequently asked questions, not just in the library, but for all of student support. So if you have APA questions, you can find those with Writing Center resources. Uh, there's financial aid and career services, so really just about anything. And we even have some technical help available here, particularly if you're having trouble with PDFs. A lot of people run into snags with those. Uh, next to get help is start your research. And for that, we've got uh, lots of different ways to get into all of the different types of resources that we have, as well as that A to Z list, the alphabetical list of databases. And you can go straight into Thoreau from here as well. Um, we have a Google Scholar link here. And the benefit of doing a Google Scholar search from the this uh, library search box is that when you search from the library Google Scholar search box, it's going to be connected to our holdings. So it's going to give you these Find at Walden links to help you find full text. And that works the same way that the Find at Walden's worked when we were in the library databases. You just continue to follow the links to get into your full text. So it's really slick. Um, and it works almost all the time. Also, under Start Your Research, we have a link to Ulrich's. Uh, the one big drawback to searching in Google Scholar is that you can't limit to peer review. And so sometimes if you do find things through Google Scholar, if you're looking through a reference list, you might want to go into Ulrich's to search um, for the journal title and see if it really is something that's um, that goes through the peer review process. So you can uh, search for your journal title here. And what we're looking for is this little striped shirt that's actually a referee shirt because refereed is another term for peer reviewed. And when you pull up um, the listing, you can see that my Journal of Academic Librarianship has the referee shirt. So that means that any research articles I find in that journal have been through the peer review process. So that's just an easy way to verify the peer review status of any of your journals. And again, that's found from Start Your Research. And you can find both Google Scholar search box that's connected to the library, as well as Ulrich's for verifying peer review from that page. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, basically, you're in school. You have to look at information a little bit differently. Uh, sources have to be reliable, and oftentimes your instructors are going to ask for scholarly resources. You have access to a really good library, so take advantage of it and use it. And remember that you have lots of tools available to you in the library and help. As well, uh, you, All you have to do is learn what the tools are and familiarize yourself with them. Spending a little bit of time up front will save you a lot of time down the road, but it doesn't mean that you're alone. Um, you do have, you can always ask us for help. And to do that, you can go to our Ask a Librarian button from the library website. And you can see that uh, you can contact us via email. We have chat hours available um, for at least a couple hours every day. Uh, you can leave a voicemail. And doctoral students have those research appointments available to them as well. So any other questions? And can you show us again uh, where the, you can access the quick answers uh, from the library homepage? Absolutely. So from the library homepage, there are lots of different ways you can get there. But uh, one of the easiest ways is from Ask a Librarian, has the quick answers available right here. 
I think that those are embedded on a lot of uh, pages along the way as well. And, um, and we also had them, sorry, we also had them available from the education research page. Uh, we have the quick answers search link available there as well. There it'll just give you a big search box. Yes, it's a beautiful thing, the quick answers. Like I said, you can find answers to all sorts of things there, not just the library. Yeah, so someone did have a question uh, for doctoral appointments. Is that available after the topic has been approved or if you're just in the doctoral program? Just if you're in the doctoral program, you can book those um, anytime. It's 30 minutes one-on-one -on -one with a librarian and you can just click on that to open it up. We meet via Skype uh, and phone, sometimes Zoom. Some of us offer Zoom as well. And you would just go into the Riley College um, if you're in the education program and there you can see what we have available and uh, it'll just pop up as what's available in there. I like to recommend either choosing um, Zoom or Skype. I know Anne, you have both Zoom and Skype, correct? I do, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so do I. Um, and I, I think that makes it nicer uh, for students because then we can share our screen and um, show you exactly um, what we're talking about in case there's any um, technology problems. If when you're on the telephone, sometimes it's hard to walk people through. That's true. Yeah, if you have the bandwidth to do the video um, for screen sharing, that can be really, really helpful in, in appointment times. Okay, anything else? I don't see any other questions coming in. But I think if everybody knows where they can go to ask the librarian to ask a question, um, you know, we, we respond very quickly uh, to the emails there. We do, yeah, we answer seven days a week. It's not 24 seven, but we do answer seven days a week and the turnaround time's pretty short. So don't be shy, just ask. <laughs> okay, well that about wraps it up then. Thanks for coming tonight. And if you have any questions, just look for us in Ask a Librarian. Thanks, bye-bye.